who are you? I'm Baby No Money. Baby No Money, welcome to Lucky's Bodega. I'm happy to be home. It's amazing. This place is great. It's so sweet and delicious. And baby, right off the bat, I have a gift for you. A So Loki 7-inch. Dang. How many? They made like a hundred of these. That you were on. Could you please explain? I'm literally, I'm literally right there. I'm on the back... Dude, the boys, Sam, Jeff, I hope you guys are doing well. I love you guys. What can you say about So Loki? You did an EP with them. Yeah, we did an EP a while ago. They're, they're great people. I love the the dad always follows up with my dad on emails all the time. Uh, we did a, an Ameri- uh, Canadian tour one time, and uh, I remember being really drunk in, uh, in Calgary with them, and it was a really good time. And we, oh, they, remember that one time? It, it was on the news. It was Flare Air. They had like a massive delay. We were trying to board on that flight. And we we got pushed back for seven hours straight, and we didn't make it to that show. We had to reschedule it. But Sam and Jeff, thank you. This is sick. Another gift for you, baby. Ah, uh, Jay Worthy Seven Inch also on Flippin' Jay Records. Holy moly, dude! This is this is a throwback. And actually, he's rapping over 1994 R&B and rap beats. But he's from right now, from Compton, California, and Vancouver as well. And it's on Flippin' J Records. Yeah. Oh, Honda Carter. Wow. Your label mate. Yeah. Wow. This is ridiculous, dude. Thank you so much. Holy smokes. But it doesn't stop there. Vancouver has a lot of rap, including the Potato Head people. Potato head people? A seven inch. Hey, Jazzy Jeff. And that's another gift for you with Jazzy Jeff. I have to buy myself a vinyl. And Dilla Soul. Holy shit. So some Vancouver hip hop seven inches and one of them featuring you. What do you think? Vancouver hip hop seven inches. Yeah. Well, I am I got about seven inches too. So, I mean. A baboom. A baboom. Baboom. Babing, baby. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I got to make a seven inch. I don't know. Do is do you just put on the normal on normal player and it works? Forty five RPM. Oh, same thing. Okay, cool. Interesting. I I'm gonna buy my dad one for Christmas. I moved home. I just sold my apartment. I'm moving home with my parents. So I'll buy one and then we can play these for Christmas. So. And that's a gift for you. These are all gifts for you. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Oh my God. Baby, no money. Did your uncle from Beirut give you Diablo two? Wow. Holy shit. That is crazy. How do you know that? Uh, what? What? Okay. Yeah. Diablo 2, favorite game. When my parents, we, we renovated our house, I moved to my grandmother's and my, uh, my uncle from Beirut was just like visiting, yada, yada, yada. And he ended up bringing this game and he was like, oh yeah. So my brother, sister and I were playing and I was the best at four years of age. I was the best. I played a barbarian and I got to act two. My sister and brother couldn't beat and first boss. They suck. But that's crazy. How do you know that? I don't even know if I've ever said that in an interview. But well, you are a baby no money. We have to know. Yeah, I guess we do. I guess we do. Baby no money, quote, I'm the best. What is going on here? If you could please open up to number one. I'm the best. <laughs> okay, yes. Yeah, so. Please explain what's going on here and how did you know? Uh... I am the best, and uh, there's a song on YouTube where I don't remember the guy's name, but it just goes like, but, but, I'm the best, I'm the best, and it was kind of an anthem to my life at that point. This guy doesn't even have a yearbook quote. This guy doesn't either. What are you? Okay, whatever. I'm still the best, so there's nothing really going on other than I'm the best, and I, I was the best earlier, and I'm still the best, so. And you are a baby? No money. And if we turn to number two, we see... The biggest, the biggest hipster. That is me. Oh my god! What is that pose? I have no idea. I look so silly in this. Where is my face? I look like a thumb. Oh my god! Yeah, get it in a jar. What's going on? I, I, yeah, I don't really understand conceptually why the jar was a was a big play, but um, we're all all in jars, so it's kind of unique, I guess. But. I didn't edit this yearbook, so that wasn't my uh, creative direction. What do you remember about that pose? Like, biggest hipster, and why? Uh, I have no idea. I think I would just remember, like, I remember never washing this jacket, and this jacket smelled really rancid. It smelled like Subway and a bunch of other things, and I would always, so I used to be a competitive swimmer, so I used to, like, come uh, to high school, and I would just, like, reek of chlorine all the time, and everyone, and my hair would be, like, rock solid from the chlorine, because I wouldn't wash it, 
And uh, yeah, just smell bad and look weird and always wear the same clothing every day. And they were like, oh, this guy's a hipster, I guess. So this is, how'd you get this? Well, you are a baby, no money. We have to find stuff. Including, let's go all the way back to grade nine. Holy what were the clothes like in grade nine? And did you wash them? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Oh my God. Look at me. I look so scrubby. <laughs> Dude, look at all my friends. No glasses. Yeah, no glasses. I ended up uh, developing uh, astigmatism. But yeah, this is me. I, I look like I'm 14, and I am very much 14. My hair is like more blonde than it used to be, or it is currently, and I look pretty happy in this photo. Everyone else doesn't look as happy as I do, so I'm happy. What about the clothes? A nice baby blue t-shirt, and I think I would wear shorts every single day, and I was like one of those kids where everyone was like, why are you wearing shorts? It's like cold out, but I was an athlete, I guess, so... Yeah, I look. I used to play so much World of Warcraft back then, and life was super sick, and there was no responsibility at all. It was dope. So, cool. And, and you are baby. No money. You were called the Moo. M Moo. You were called the Mooch. Oh, the Gooch. Yeah, the Gamooch. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The Gamooch. Okay. So, my last name is Gamoochian, So everyone called us Gamoochian or either Gooch. My brother's like artist name is Gooch Tunes, and he makes like Italian house. He lives in Copenhagen, and uh, my dad used to DJ at the at the pit in UBC when he went to UBC. Uh, now you know so much. Now speaking of McGee, I have another gift for you, baby. No money, right here. It is an alumni from McGee, Dal Richards, the legendary Dal Richards. I think I've actually, I, I think I've heard. And you can see on the back there's Dal Richards. And he authored these amazing LPs, including CFL songs. This is sick. From 1969. So these are all like the, the songs of the... CFL. The, yeah, CFL, the football teams. That's crazy. And also an autographed, an autographed rest in peace, Dal Richards from 1982. I gotta sample this stuff. And he's from McGee. Yes, exactly. So thank you. Full circle, full circle. Holy guacamole. I mean, Gravy, Gravy and I, we make a bunch of music, and it's like it does sound pretty sampley based. So maybe, maybe it's time. Oh, look at that engineer, Vancouver, BC. That's so sick. This is a really nice photo. So he went to McGee, and you went to McGee, and now we're reunited. Although, yeah. again, rest in peace, Dow. Yeah, rest in peace. But right. he might live on in the sample. Yeah, he might. We might have to do it for the for the culture in Vancouver. That'd be amazing. That'd be great. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Oh, no problem. Uh, no, yeah. Ah, yeah, no problem. This is a, I've, I've always, this is like something I've wanted to do on my bucket list, so I'm, I'm so happy we're doing this, and it's... <laughs> A lot of emotions are firing right now. It's amazing. Well, thank you so much for the kind words, and thank you for wanting to do this at Lucky's Bodega. Lucky's Bodega. And showing up early. You show up early. I'm always early I, in a lot of aspects of my life. What's the importance, baby, no money, ba-boom? Ba-boom, baby. Of 41st and Granville. Holy shit. Okay, so 41st in Granville, uh, I lived there with a bunch of my friends, and we were in a rap collective called Broke Boy Gang, and we pretty much trashed this house, and I'm so sorry, we didn't sign a contract. I literally just signed my name at the bottom of it, and the damage deposit was like sent in, but I, I, I apologize. Uh, and the people who live there now, I also apologize still. I remember like when we moved out, there was like raccoons in the house. It was, it was, I don't really want to talk about it because it's going to make me look insane. But Did you feed them? Uh, no, I think they were just eating our garbage. Uh, but, yeah. 245 East Broadway. 245 East Broadway. Mintage Mall. Oh, Mintage. Okay, yeah, that's... Uh, Glory Days? Glory Days. That's Seb. Yeah, Seb. So he was a part of uh, Broke White Gang as well. He he goes by Young Sebby Swag. Uh, he's a good guy. I, I saw him last night. We were drunk partying. I, I hadn't actually drank alcohol for nine months, and then last night I had a refurbishing of the, the, the liquor cabinet. And uh, that was nice. It was good. I definitely drank a little bit too much, but uh, it was good to see him last night. And How does he fit in? Seb, he's important. So, yeah, he really kind of birthed the whole career. I was chilling with DJ Dan once again, and we were obviously faded out of our minds doing absolutely nothing, just driving around town, probably listening to, like, Flume. I don't know. We would just drive around and listen to Skrillex and Flume, and then Seb was like, hey, come over, let's smoke a blunt. 
we smoked a blunt and he put uh like a chief keef type beat we had apple headphones and we just kind of giggled over the song with autotune and that exact moment was almost euphoric and i was like damn i'm trying to do this for the rest of my life it was, it was like really uh like a good outlet and ex experience that i was just like okay this is sick i like, I gotta keep making music, and then I'm here now. So and now he's at Glory Days Vintage. Yeah, Glory Days Vintage, it amazing place. If you want to get dope clothing on the low, Sebi swag. Four twenty five at the UNC Student Union. Yep. So those are when I made. I was making money off my music, and I was making about four dollars a day, and I would allocate that to a burrito, breakfast burrito, which is like two sausages about six hash browns two eggs that were probably carton eggs wrapped up and with a like a canister of salsa and we get that every single day yes i was packing on tons of pounds and fat but it didn't matter because i was studying getting educated so but yeah that's that was like my first little indication of like oh i'm actually making money from saying gibberish online that's sick so here we are Young Cashew, Fiji Ferrari. Holy shit. So Young Cashew was my, my, my neighbor. No, no, no. He was my roommate. And he hadn't made a song, and I was just producing beats. And I was like, dude, why don't you just rap on a song? And he just started rapping. And ever since, uh, yeah, he's, yeah. And then Fiji Ferrari was like this extra producer name that I kind of started making. I stopped kind of producing under that alias, but... Um, that was deep cuts. Deep cuts. Yo, Young young Gravy, or Young Cashew is the only person who has a Young Gravy feature that's, like, not really, like, anyone else, which is super interesting. Facts. Irrelevant. Yeah. Ir irrelevant. Oh, yeah, that song did well for him. Uh, I produced by? Produced by Baby No Money. Yeah, that song did well. I remember he, he performed it with me in Kelowna. We did a show. It was everyone was he was like wasted he couldn't even stand up and it was the funniest thing i've ever seen and he had so much fun i saw him last night too he came to the show last night he was he was proud of me he was dope well baby no money as a producer i have a gift for you a drum drops producer record whoa for you to produce from 1978 this is sick already check out some of the titles funk rock straight rock medium rock three four country rock hard rock shuffle so some drum sounds possibly for you to sample. All right, all right. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to start going into a little bit more uh, like alternative singer-songwriter-esque. So maybe I might will, I might have to sample this. Do Okay, so if this is, if, the, if it's just drums, you can sample this without getting copywritten, right? Essentially? Kind of? Kind of? I have no idea. Well, you should know, I mean. But, uh, no. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Oh, thank you very much. You are baby. No money. 41st and Fraser. Oh, uh, 41st and Fraser. Is that where you first heard Young Gravy? Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So, Dan, once again, back with Dan. I remember I was, <clears throat> I showed him Mr. Clean. And this was way before Gravy even showed his face. Way before anything. And he was like, there's no way this is going to blow up. And I was like, trust me, it's going to blow up. Because I remember I found Puya in like 2012. And I was like, yo, this guy's going to blow up. And I've, I'm, I'm pretty good. My my like music radar is pretty decent. Uh, and I was just like, there's nothing that sounds like this. And it's so ridiculous. And he hadn't shown his face. And then I remember when I FaceTimed him for the first time, I was like, either he's going to be like a 45-year-old dad or just some like normal dude. And he ended up being a normal dude that was just really tall with a crazy voice. But driving... Uh, I think we were at a gas station, the Chevron on 41st and Fraser, I think. Uh, and uh, I just played it. And Dan was like, this sucks. And I was like, it rocks. So I love you, Matt. And Gravy oftentimes goes, whoa. <laughs> he definitely does. Uh, his music is sick. I just finished an amazing tour with him. Uh, you should have come out to the show last night. It would have been great. I actually wasn't in the area, but I love when Gravy goes, whoa, there's like a tag, a whoa tag. Yeah, I, I can't remember who originally... Well, I have a gift for you right here to give to young Gravy, Dennis Edwards. This is him? This is him. Wow. Oh, man, I wish you were here to... Don't look any further. That's the song. That's for Gravy. Thank you. I will give this to him. I wanted to fly his mom out to the show last night and then our moms could hang out and whatnot, but... Uh, 
this is this is great. I will give this to him 100. percent Thank. You. Uh, no problem. That's a gift for young gravy. And we're still here with baby. No money at Lucky's Bodega. Who do we have here? We have Lucky and Bodega. And also on the far left, Shrez Higgins. Shrez, come on over here. Who is he? He uh, he's my creative director slash influencer slash lover slash best friend slash dad. Videos very important. Hey, I say that, but I'm biased. Well, I would like to ask you a little bit about the videos. What exactly is going on here? There you are. And Blake was there too. Blake Davey, fantastic DOP from Vancouver here. Uh, I, this is the one time I held the camera, and of course the photographer took a shot, so it looks like I'm doing all the work. There's but a lot and shout out to Andre. Yes, Andre. Andre took this photo. So this is um, this is our our friend Baby No Money here, and as you can see, he has a very lovely physique. Uh, but but we nothing, nothing nothing near as nice as theirs. We surrounded him in monsters, people whose physiques are literally a, a psychological disorder. <laughs> the, the amount of effort the people that are around and put into their physiques goes beyond anything you've ever seen. And so I, I had this uh, this vision of him surrounded by incredibly fit and insane. I, I watched uh, I watched um, Pumping Iron and I thought that muscles, the glistening muscles were so beautiful and I just wanted to allow Alex to be surrounded by that. And baby, what was going through your mind then? Uh, absolutely nothing. I remember I put a bunch of toilet paper in here just in case if I moved too fast and something fell out. But it did. Baboom. Baboom, baboom. And all this was in Victoria. No, this was actually in Vancouver. We shot this one in Vancouver. This was like the first one we ever shot in Vancouver because yeah. we needed to find a, a concert hall and then... Uh, and bodybuilders. We don't, have the, we don't have the meat in Victoria. We needed more mass. But you brought Rebecca Black to Victoria. Yeah, we brought Rebecca Black to Victoria. That was a good time. Yeah. We, did a, we did a drag swap, gender swap type thing. Sure is. And do, 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 do. Do, do. And you love house, don't you? Yeah, I love house music. House music is great. I like all, pretty much all forms of music, but house music and like up tempo, like, like drum and bass, it just gets you moving, right? It's so amazing. And I have a gift for you right here from 1989. Desky, let there be house. The OG house record. Holy shit. Dude, this is, I, I am so excited to spin these. This is amazing. Thank you so much. Well, which possibly you could sample from 89, like the OG house record. Yeah, I, I definitely could. I could sample this. Yeah, I, the, the OGs and the people who, who are deep into this world would definitely get it. I would, dude, oh, thank you so much. Give me another hug. I, oh, yeah, no problem. <laughs> Uh, baby no money winding up here did you once do a stream on periscope where a guy fell asleep and passed out i think i did i think that was when i was at university and we were all drunk and i was feeding was it it might have been dan my other roommate uh i think he's currently at oxford right now studying uh medicine uh wow that's the deepest of all cuts ever I, I I think I do remember it but I'm pretty sure we were drunk I, I so I don't really remember all of it but I think I did do that feeding people is always good too well you're a baby no money we have to know y yeah baby no money we're here at Lucky's bodega and I thought to end the interview we'd call over TJ to give you a tour of the Lucky's bodega and TJ, could you lead us? Here we are at Lucky's. What's going on here? Welcome, guys. We got snacks and drinks from around the world. And baby, no money. <laughs> and baby, no money. And Bubba knows. I just wanted to say I also play Diablo and I'm a barbarian. Shout out, barbarian. Oh, shout out, barbarians. Hell yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm on my way. We're going to make sure you got some snacks. Now that you're back in town, we got the strawberry milkshake. We got the goods. Some Kirsch Cola from Germany. Oh, my God. These look amazing. They are amazing. What, is everything priced 420 for, for a time, reason? Whatever you want. Yeah. All right. I see. I see you, I see you, I see you. Just what would you want to eat? What do you want? Whatever you want. Okay, so we're having a little picnic Easy. afterwards. Easy, picnic. We got a yeah. double cup. We got a double cup. Get some Brookio Oreos from America. Brookio? Brookio, so it's three. It's uh, cookie dough, uh, peanut butter, and original. What the hell? I don't look four months pregnant for no reason. I try everything, guys. Come on on this side. Clean energy, not bad. Oh, these are good, the Sugas. But we don't, we don't. Whoa, 
This looks disgusting. It is disgusting, but it works. Uh, Let's get one anyways, and they got some pitch black. Whoa. The rarest of the Mountain Dew. Whoa. Flavors. I'm going to get, oh my God, I have to buy this. We're going to get some Pepsi that's meant for fried chicken too. Some luck. Please explain what? What? For, what is it? It's a Pepsi Zero drink, and it's designed to enhance a fried chicken flavor oh. once you have fried chicken. So. Oh, whoa, whoa. So, but like, do you fry it in this? You don't, but you can if you want to because your baby no money, whatever you say. That's, that's fried, dude. That'd be crazy. At Lucky's Bodega. We are at Lucky's Bodega getting getting very With TJ showing us around. Oh, that is insanity. Sure, cinnamon toast crunch. Cinnamon dust for baby no money. Some cookies. Dude. Whoa. This is Pancake crazy. Can you please explain what's going on here? Cinito CTC is the best cereal there is and this is a fucking pancake. And for the cookie and the icing. We're ready. Dude, holy guacamole. I yeah. have too much now. I, also, we had some wrap chips as well. Dude, they're up front here. I'll show you. Oh, but what's here? What, what is going Oh, my God. Mr. Beast. Shout out Mr. Beast. We got the Mr. Feastables Beast. line up here. Dude, he's, he's crushing it right now. Yeah, there is no game. It's and Mr. right here are the wraps. Could you please explain? So we got these oh, right here we have some wrap snacks. We got little baby flavor. We got the little Dirk. Dirk we got uh, Rick Ross. The only one missing is baby no money right now. Yeah, so. we need a baby gravy uh, like poutine flavor. You know what I mean? I agree. Oh, Dragon Ball Z. What is this gummies? You gotta make sure you got some Dragon Ball Z gummies. <laughs> We don't have the senzu beans right now, it looks, but next time we'll make sure we have the senzu beans. A little mystery candy tin for Baby No Money. All right, all right, all right. And what was Baby No Money standing behind? Could oh, you explain? Just like one of these recently in Vegas. I saw you post yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, and the Pedialyze. I was like, when you come, we go. What is that? It's a, it's a Krabby Patty, and you get five different flavors, per, perhaps, and then you get a little gift in there, too. It's really cool. I'll just take the whole box from Baby Damn, no okay, we up. Is all of the we up today. And TJ, what, what was Baby No Money standing behind or in front of? Next to the Oscar Mayer bacon gummy. I like the Oscar Mayer hot dog weenies, too. And we got those, too. Damn. <laughs> and the cotton candy? Skittles cotton candy, Kool-Aid cotton candy, whatever cotton candy you can think of. And over there, what's going on there? The Bob, the Bob Ross, the Bob Ross gummy kit. It is candy. Holy, you your own candy and your own little painting out of it. What the hell, <laughs> that's fire. All right, here we go. And what's Coming the home, macaroni home. and cheese? We got macaroni and cheese gummy nardwar. We got Nemo cakes. I feel bad piling this on you, baby. No money, please forgive me. It's all good, dog. <laughs> I'm happy, man. Well, thanks, thanks so much, TJ, for showing us all the stuff. And thanks for letting us do the interview here at Lucky's. Really appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me. And TJ, do 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 So, baby, no money. Anything else to add to the people out there at all? <sighs> nah. Just come and have fun. And uh, go to Lucky's Bodega if you want to get good Christmas presents for your kids. Why should people care about baby, no money? Why should people care? People should care about baby, no money because I make music for your family your mother, your grandmother, your sister, and your stepmother. I love you guys. Well, thanks so much, Baby Do Money. Keep on washing your hands in the free world, and do, 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 do.